Well, South Africa has signed a vaccine development and production financing agreement with a German bank. Uh, what this means is over the next five years, the country will receive over 100 million rand to develop vaccines. Uh, this, of course, comes after revelations that South Africa had overpaid for vaccines during the COVID-19 pandemic. The president and other African heads of state have been very vocal about their unhappiness at the way African countries were treated when those vaccines were distributed. So what does this new agreement mean? Let's unpack uh, what it will mean for the country. I'm joined by Dr. Phil M. Jwara, a Director General of the Department of Science and Innovation. Doctor, good to have you on ENCA. I imagine this is a good thing, but before we get into the pros and cons of this, I can hear people watching at home panicking because I mentioned the word vaccines. What vaccines are we talking about? Well, maybe let's give a little bit of a context so we can then respond to the, um, to the question that you've asked, Gareth. Mm. The first thing is that you remember that we were at the end of the queue during COVID-19 as far as vaccines are concerned. And at that time, uh, because of that, the president, together with uh, the Indian government, went to the World Health Organization, as well as the World Intellectual Property uh, Office, to look, World Trade Office, yeah? to look at uh, how best we can make sure that the knowledge that is available worldwide for vaccine production is made available to developing countries. And as a result of that, uh, South Africa uh, responded to a call which was issued to develop what we call an mRNA platform for vaccines development. And if it's successful, the condition is that uh, we would then partner with other low medium income countries to make sure that vaccines are produced in these uh, developing countries. At that time, of course, the focus was on COVID-19 vaccine. And since then, we have put together a consortia of institutions in South Africa. This include the South African Medical Research Council, uh, a number of universities, Wits University, University of Cape Town, uh, two uh, companies, BioVac and Afrigen, to look at whether we could develop vaccines using this platform, which is called the mRNA uh, platform. So as I've said, of course, at the beginning, the platform was meant for COVID vaccine, but this platform is also a, a platform that can be used for other vaccines. And the team has been able to extract the right antigen for a number of vaccines in Cape Town in this consortium. Mm. And they are now in clinical, clinical trial for COVID-19 vaccine, but they are also starting to look at how they can develop a TB vaccine based on the mRNA platform. Why, so why Germany, we... uh, forgive me, doctor, why is Germany giving us this money? Uh, what does Germany get out of something like this? Because we have high-end medical experts in this country that could possibly have done something similar. Why do we need Germany to help us with this? What does Germany get out of uh, doing this for us? Well, let me go back to the context that I started off with. Uh, in the consortium that the World Health Organization set up, Germany was one of the countries. There were other international countries. Canada is involved. Mm. France is involved and many, many other international countries. I think uh, at the last update of the mRNA hub in Cape Town, uh, Denmark also got involved. So there are a number of countries uh, in Europe. So Germany is not one of them. But Germany has then decided uh, to give us, uh, through KFW, as you indicated, approximately 20 million euros for the next five years to develop this capacity, but our own capacity as South Africa as well, outside that mRNA hub with the consortia that we've referred to. And in engaging uh, with Germany, they have an interest as part of the science and technology agreement to work with us for knowledge transfer. So uh, one assumes that uh, this uh, loan from KFW is part of our agreement that we have with Germany. But when we engage with Germany, they have an interest in the rest of the continent because they have investments. Mm. Uh, in the rest of the continent. Mm. So they would like you, to see a healthy population. Uh, you just, you, Doctor, forgive me, you just used the word loan. Is this a loan or a grant? Uh, it's a grant, sorry. 
uh, it's a grant. Uh, it's not a loan. Yeah, we don't have to pay anything back. Sorry about that, Dami. Mm-hmm. No, no, so quite okay. The, so what does this, this do for our medical research in this country? Because I think a lot of lessons were learned uh, during COVID. I'm thinking of young up-and-coming uh, doctors and vaccinologists. We, we all know, you know, Dr. De Oliveira uh, coming to the fore, uh, very, very famous now because of his research there. How does this help our medical fraternity uh, to, to raise their game, to raise their bar here in South Africa on the international stage. I imagine that's also part of the aim, isn't it? Yes, first of all, uh, the investment is not only then going to be the KFW grant. South Africa is also investing its own funding and our department in particular uh, has made uh, resources available for the scientists that are involved in vaccine research and development to work uh, together, of course, in partnership with Germany for one knowledge know-how, but also to uh, get the infrastructure for vaccine production in South Africa to be at the level that is required. One of the things that we do um, in the area of health is that you need to produce these vaccines through what we call good manufacturing practice. So when we manufacture vaccines, there's a certain level of production, um, uh, if you like, regulatory environment that is required. And part of uh, the funding would be uh, to help us to get to that good manufacturing practice, mm. get the regulatory standards that are required, and part of the loan would be us working with the South African Health uh, Products Regulatory Authority, uh, and therefore it will provide the scientific community that is working in this program and other programs mm. uh, with the expertise, but the funding that is needed for them to have the tools to be able to produce locally vaccines. And I want to just uh, clarify again, you use the word loan. I want to make sure that you and I are talking about a grant on this. I don't want someone to take you out of <coughs> context, Doctor. Uh, very briefly, as I say goodbye to you, then what's the timelines uh, on this? So the money is clearly coming in. Uh, the research is uh, obviously necessary. What's our timeline? It's, it's a five-year um, funding, but uh, it will start to trickle in in the next two years. We suspect that the first production of local, uh, locally produced vaccines is, is around three years uh, to five years. That's why we have agreed on a timeline uh, of five years for the, mm. uh, for the grant. This just occurred to me now. Is there a priority of vaccines that you're looking at? Because during COVID, we know that TB, for example, the vaccinations and the research into that fell by the wayside and the research and vaccinations and uh, treatment for HIV AIDS fell by the wayside. Is there a priority list uh, for this, this new yes. research and this money? Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, correct. The, the first one is, is TB because of uh, the obvious uh, challenges of TB co-infection with uh, HIV and AIDS in in South Africa. So we've targeted uh, TB based on the mRNA platform. Mm. But we've also identified two other vaccines. The other one is uh, uh, what is called hepatitis B. uh, And then the third one is what we call human papillomavirus, HPV, as it is called. So we've targeted those three vaccines initially for humans. But we've also felt that uh, we need to, uh, shall we say, rekindle the capacity that we had in animal vaccines. So we'll be working with the Agricultural Research Council and the OBP, Mm. which is based in Pretoria for what we call Rift Valley Fever, which Mm. is one of the vaccines that, of course, is for for animals, but it's one of the diseases that can move from animals to humans. And secondly, it is relatively easy uh, to produce animal vaccines, the stringents, uh, the, it's not as in terms of regulatory requirements mm, as stringent mm. as vaccines. So just to get to uh, the capacity of really going uh, uh, through the entire value chain without Rift Valley fever. Yeah, I remember animals. doing a story on this a couple of months ago. There was an issue with uh, vaccines. I think it was needed for cattle, uh, red meat yes. capital, B O capital. Uh, it was the uh, beef uh, issue in our country a couple of years ago. Not enough vaccinations around that. So maybe that's good news uh, as well from the agricultural sector. Doctor, thank you. Uh, fascinating research. I wish I knew what MRNA stands for, but I'm sure we'll speak to somebody smarter than me one day to unpack that. Doctor, uh, thank you very much for making time uh, joining us this afternoon. 20 minutes after 4 o'clock, Doctor uh, Phil Mdwara, uh, Director General, DG of the Department of Science and Innovation. So 20 million euros and it looks like a lot of research going to be made available for good things, HIV, TB, and as we're hearing, vaccinations for the agriculture sector as well.